Hello world! Welcome to learning Java, one byte at a time. This is video 31 in a tutorial series geared at bringing the wonderful wide world of Java to those with little or no programming experience. This video is a continuation of the development of the Booker application, a vehicle appraisal app. In the last video, we successfully finished the DAO class and the data store class so that we are able to store and retrieve files and information for our application. And in this video, we're going to write a short unit test class to ensure that the data is saving and loading properly. So before beginning, let's go ahead and jump into our Notepad++. And you see here we have the data store and the DAO classes. And over here, I have a blank uh, test Java class, which we will use to test the, both of these. Um, before we begin, we'll go ahead and jump into the command prompt and attempt it to compile both of these just to see if there's any compilation errors. So if I jump into here, we're going to use the Java C D dot command to compile first the data store. And right here, it's telling us on line 28, there's a semicolon expected after the return true statement. So we'll jump into the data store down to line 28. And indeed, there was a semicolon forgotten. That was my mistake. We'll go ahead and save that. And let's attempt to recompile that. All right, and now it's throwing another error on line 45. It cannot find the symbol file not found and it actually points right to the mistake there was a lowercase f and that's uh that class name actually calls for an uppercase f so the catch statement on line 45 we need to make that correction very quickly on line 45 all right and we will change that lowercase f to a capital s or capital f and that will fix that mistake now let's try again to compile that and it looks like it compiled correctly wonderful now we will attempt to compile the dao class so dao.java and we can see here that there was an identifier expected on line 9 uh, between the declaration of the constructor of the dao and the empty method body it was expecting something there and i know what we forgot we forgot the parentheses for the parameters so if we jump back to dao.java right here line nine we'll go ahead and include the empty parentheses between the uh, constructor of the dao and the empty method body if we save that that should be what we're looking for let's go ahead and attempt to recompile this all right beautiful so both of those classes compiled correctly so we know that there are no compilation errors now let's go ahead and write the testing class to make sure that the functionality works and so just real briefly, let's mention that the two methods we're going to be testing are the save data and the load data. So the save data is going to accept as an argument a, a string array and then a string which will be the file name. Then the load data is going to be returning, it's going to accept a string, a string called a file name, but it's also going to be returning an array list. And so I briefly mentioned a couple of videos ago that we were using different sorts of data structures. Here for saving data, we're using a string array, but for loading data, we're using an array list of strings. And so you may be wondering why there's going to be different data structures there. And simply put, when we're saving the data, we're not necessarily going to need to traverse the array or extract elements in a random way. We're simply going to compile it and then save it. But when we're loading it, we may need to extract certain elements from that to apply to the vehicle uh, object. And so having an array list be returned of strings, traversing the array list and grabbing elements at random and manipulating it tends to be a lot easier than doing so with a string array. And so for simplicity, if we don't need it, we're not going to use it. And when we do need it, we will. And we're going to keep it, uh, we're going to keep it fitted to the scope of what we're working with. So you'll see a little bit better as we start to, as we start to get more into this project. But just to sort of point that out, the save data will have a string array and the load data will have an array list of strings. And both of those will fit the function a lot more nicely. So if we jump into the test.java, uh, we know, first of all, we have to declare the package as being part of the Booker package. So let's ensure that it knows which package it's part of. And before we actually begin the class body, let's make the import that we know we're going to need from java.util to pull in the array list object. Then we can go ahead and declare the class, public class called test. 
and then within the class body we can begin to build this. So we know first of all we're going to need to have an array list of strings, we're going to need to have a string array, and then we'll go ahead and write a string, just a simple string that we'll call the file name. So beginning with the array list, we know it's going to contain strings, and we'll call this one load data, and we'll just set it equal to a new construction of an array list. We'll use the keyword new to construct a new one with uh, no parameters. Next we'll declare, uh, and actually this will need to be static now that I'm thinking about it, because we're not going to have an instance of the test class, we're just going to run it from the main method. We'll do a static string array, and we'll call this one save data, and we'll set this one equal to constructing a new string array, and we'll have three elements that we're going to uh, save. And finally, we'll do a static string object that we'll call file name, and we'll set that equal to just whatever you want the file name to be. I'm going to call mine testdata.txt. It can really be anything as long as it's consistent. All right, after that, we can go ahead and declare the public static void main. like so. And within the main method, we're going to go ahead and let's first load our string array with the data that we want saved. So we'll do save data at index position zero equals, and we'll set a string sum data at index zero, like so. And I can copy and paste this. For the other two elements we're going to need, so at index position 1 and index position 2, we will likewise have some text displayed there. And so now our string array actually is now loaded with uh, three elements of string, of string data. So now let's go ahead and, um, since we know that the data store is going to return a Boolean value when the data is saved, letting us know if it was successful or not, it's going to return this Boolean as being true or false, true if it actually saves to the DAO object, and that DAO object under the uh, save data will in turn return a Boolean value. So our test, Java, should be expecting a Boolean value. So let's print the Boolean out to the console to see if it was uh, successful in saving. So we'll do a system.out.print line, and I'll do data saved successful, and then I'll just concatenate the Boolean value. And so if we call the dao.savedata method, that returns the Boolean. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the method right here, dot save data. And what that will return is a true or false. And so printing out to the console, it will say data saved successful, either true or false right there. And then the parameters we're going to need to pass through are going to be the save data uh, string array that we created, and then the file name like so, and we'll make sure to close out both of those parentheses, and that'll be the test to see if the data saves correctly. Next, we're going to call the load data function, or rather, we're going to set our array list called load data equal to the function in the DAO class, because we know this function returns an array list. And so if we set our array list equal to something that returns an array list, it will, pop it will populate it correctly. So we're going to call the DAO class and the load data method in that class. All this one needs is a string, which we already know is going to be the name of the file. And since we've defined the file name up here as being testdata.txt, it will be consistent between saving it here and loading it here. So we know we're going to get the exact file. And let's go ahead and print out to the console. the load data, and since it's an array list, we're going to use the get to access the index position. We'll access index position zero, and we can simply just copy and paste this two more times. Index position one, index position two. So what we should expect this to do is, we should expect it to first print out to the console data saved successful with a Boolean value as to whether or not it was saved. And then immediately after that, we should expect it to print out in order all three elements of the array of the saved file. So let's go ahead and save this and attempt to compile this to see if it works. And we have here an error on line eight, cannot find symbol, static string array save data equals string of three. And so let's see what was going on here. All right.
right, so line eight, static string array save data equals, ah, okay, so what happened was we forgot to use the new keyword to construct a new string array. So let's save that. Now that we're constructing a new string array of three elements, we should be able to attempt to compile that one more time. And it looks like it worked. Okay, perfect. Just jumping in here to the uh, folder, the package folder, let's do a quick directory check and we see that we have the class file for DAO, the class file for data store, and now the class file for test. So this is looking pretty good so far. It looks like everything compiled correctly. Now all we need to do is run it using the Java command, ensuring that we include the package name, and we're going to try to run test. All right, perfect. So as you can see, data saved successful, true. So we know that the dao.save data method works. And we have, as expected here, some data at index zero, index one, and index two. And so this is looking pretty good. So we know that both of these classes are now working correctly. Just to really drive the point home that this worked, if we were to go to try to open, we should expect to see that, see that text file there as well. And this was called testdata.txt. Let's open up this text file. And you can see it actually did create the text file with the three elements that we passed through. Data index zero, data index one, and some data at index two. And so not only did the save and the load work correctly, but it also actually created that text file for us. And so if we were to pass through different file names, it would continue to create those text files. So this is looking pretty good. I think that this project is coming together very nicely. I know it's been sort of a shorter video, but I think that we've covered our points here. In the next video, I'm sure that we'll start working on the parsing class to begin to parse the elements of the vehicle into the advertisement content. And then probably after that, we'll start to work with the populate advertisement class, which is going to take care of implementing the parsing tool to return the full-fledged uh, sales ad content. So anyway, I hope this was fun and entertaining. Love to see everyone back in the next video. Thank you so much and have a wonderful night.